Alright, Shalom, Shalom. I'm gonna give all praises to Yahweh. Bahashim Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rakakadash Yahweh being the Heavenly Father. Hamashiach Yahweh Shai being the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father. The Lord and Savior of the children of Israel, which are being called today. So called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. But according to the word of the Lord, according to prophecy, according to relics. Okay, they truly indeed are the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible, okay, so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. I want to give double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, GMS, and salutation to the elect brethren out there pushing the word in sincerity and truth, risking their lives and their freedom to do so. And of course, to those men, I see Shalom, while Barakim Al, thumb, peace and blessings upon you, okay. Here I have a lesson going into the economy of the United States of America, okay, because as brothers can see in the news, man, the Dow is falling, you know, almost thousand points man and we living in beautiful times because the the the, the united states of america is going to go through an economic collapse to the likes it's never seen before man it's going to be worse than the great depression that happened in 1929 it's going to be worse than uh the, the the market crash that happened in 2008 actually the upcoming economic collapse that we're going to witness in our lifetime is going to be worse than all the all all these uh crashes that happened in the past put together man it's going to be worse than all that put together man all right so we living in you know we living in beautiful times and also we living in times that you know get your faith right before the upcoming uh, days of the lord man so right now i have a uh, have an article on cnn uh business.com entitled dow falls 832 points in the third worst day by points ever okay I'm going to read that again. It says, Dow falls 832 points and third worst day by points ever. And this article came out uh, October 10th, 2018. So earlier this month. Okay. And it says, uh, New York, uh, New York CN, CNN business. The Dow plunged nearly 832 points on Wednesday. The third worst point decline in history. You see that? So the, 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 the. The Dow is falling, you know, uh, tremendously. It said that this is the third worst point decline in history, man. So this never happened before, man. So this is how we know that, you know, the, uh, the, the, the current state of the United States economy cannot, cannot, can't, can't stand, man. It's point blank period. It can't stand. You got, uh, you got uh, the interest rates raised. I believe it's the third time this year the interest rates raised. You got the United States of America in certain trade wars with uh, certain countries like China. The Dow's falling hundreds of points. Worst decline in history, man. So we, man, the United States economy is going to collapse. That's imminent. Okay. It says all 30 Dow stocks were in the red, sending the index below 26,000 points for the first time in a month. The index fell by more than 3%. It says the S&P 500 posted in fifth straight decline plummeting nearly 3.3 percent and tech stocks got hit particularly hard it says the nasdaq dropped more than four uh, four percent and the worst percentage decline since june 2016 okay i'm gonna skip down just a little bit it says stocks are in the midst of a scary october slump you see that which I think, you know, all this happening in the month of October, I, I think is interesting, okay? Because this is when the elites, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the elite banking family, you know, you're talking about uh, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the, uh, the Gettys, okay? All these elite banking family, the shadow government, the 1%, the Illuminati, this is when they do their, uh, their sacrifices, man. This is when they do their sacrifices, uh, I'm talking about the um, the, the strongest, most potent, potent sacrifices during during this month, uh, October. And what do we have in October, the month of Halloween? Okay, where they sacrifice, uh, where they uh, they do their uh, sacrificial uh, sacrifices to their uh, to their gods, to their demons, to Satan. Okay, during the month of October, and it's the same month where all this uh, this is happening to uh, to the economy. Okay. Talking about record drops in the stock market. And it's a slide it says sliding sharply because investors are worried about raising interest rates. It says October has often been a nerve wracking month for investors, and this month is living up to that reputation. All three indexes 
are in the red this month, but the Nasdaq has nearly taken it on the chin. It has plunged nearly 8% already in October. Okay, it says the Dow's point decline was the worst since February when the index fell more than a thousand twice. It says the Dow's percentage decline uh, doesn't crack the top percentage declines. The index fell 23% in 1914 and on Black Monday and in uh, 1986. Okay. So I just wanted to grab a little bit on this article. Okay. They're showing you that record low uh, uh, Dow uh, plunging. Okay. It's been record lows that the Dow has been plunging, man. It's been falling. Okay. So this is, if you want to read the rest of it, this is CNN Business. Uh, dot com articles entitled Dow Falls 832 Points in the Third Worst Day by Points Ever. Okay, it came out October 10th, 2018. Now, I want to grab this other article on RT. Okay, RT News, and this came out October 24th, 2018. So, a couple days ago, I say last week or say, and it's entitled uh, U.S. Economy About to Collapse, Taking Down Dollar. An American standard of li uh, living, Peter Schiff, okay, which he's a famous economy, economist, and he he tells you know he tells the people out flat that United United States of America's uh economy is gonna fall, it's gonna collapse, man. It, it's only a matter of time. That's imminent. The only thing that's separating us and the <laughs> and the and the comfort that we live in, well, I say the comfort that the, the the average American living and the economy collapsing is only a thin line of time, man. It's imminent. Okay, and he's one of the people that breaks it down, Peter Schiff. All right, and this article says Tuesday, U.S. stocks plunge follow, uh, following a massive sell-off on global markets is seen by some analysts as a sign of more bad things to come. And that's right, man. Even the scriptures prophesied that the uh, that the U.S. economy is going to collapse, and those will, you know, we go into it. And it says so. That, it says the analyst has a sign of more bad things to come, man. All right. And it says RT talked to veteran stockbroker Peter Schiff to explore the issue in depth. After the uh, dramatic uh, early drop, U.S. stocks recovered but finished lower after a wild day on Wall Street. Okay, which Wall Street is prophesied in the scriptures, man, which we're going to get into it. It says, by the closing bell, the Dow was down 126 points, or 0.5%, uh, recovering most of its early losses. The Nasdaq closed down at 0.4%. Uh, Shalaki says, while the S and while the S and P 500 shed 15 points, f uh, fi f uh, finishing 0.6% lower, according to Schiff, Peter Schiff. We currently serves as uh, who currently serves as the CEO of Euro Pacific Capital. The uh, the stock market is definitely looking like it's heading for another bear market. Okay, so I just want to play a quick clip on uh what what uh what Peter Schiff had to say. Okay. We began today's newscast with another market slump. There's been a couple of them of late. Yes, it recovered later in the day, but many very smart people are saying it may be a sign of some uh, things to come. One of those is Peter Schiff. Uh, Peter is the CEO and the chief global strategist at Euro Pacific Capital. He's all over the Googles, as they say, and he's all over YouTube as well. I see him there myself all the time. Really smart, passionate commentary is what he offers. Something he often has a tendency to say things, by the way, that a lot of people don't. So, Peter, thanks so much for being with us. You know. I don't know if you caught the very beginning of the show, but I explained that there's a household debt issue of about 15 trillion out there. Um, is that the only debt that we need to be worried about? Yeah. Uh, no, everybody is loaded up with debt. And it's not like we, we began the, uh, this monetary experiment without much debt. We had a lot of debt in 2008. In fact, the financial crisis was about debt. It was about our inability to pay the debt that we had. But instead of addressing the problem and allowing uh, debt to be paid down, uh, the Federal Reserve led us down the primrose path into much deeper debt by keeping interest rates at zero and holding them there for so long. 
the Federal Reserve actually encouraged an overly indebted nation uh, to borrow even more money. So now it's all facets of American society that are leveraged to the hilt. Individuals, corporations, the federal government, the state and local governments. So everybody is loaded up with debt. And guess what? Interest rates are now finally rising. And that means the cost of servicing that debt is going up. And this is going to be a problem just like an adjustable rate mortgage uh, was a big problem in 2008 when these things were resetting. People couldn't afford to pay. Well, the same thing is going to happen on a national so, scale. Rates are going up, and we're too broke to pay. So the problem is if we try and normalize things, it's going to create chaos. Is there any way that we can avoid that at this point? No, it's impossible. In fact, because we kept it going so long, uh, the collapse is going to be that much bigger. I mean, the sooner we face that reality, the better. But no politician wants to face that reality. <laughs> right. I mean, they want to pretend everything is great. <laughs> right, of course. And, and by the way, the Trump tax cut, does it alleviate the concern, worsen the concern? What does it do? Well, obviously, it makes the concerns worse because if the government is collecting less revenue, then the deficits are getting bigger. And so now the government has to borrow even more money, and that becomes an even bigger problem. What we need is smaller government. But nobody wants to shrink government, including Donald Trump, who's now the defender of Social Security and Medicare. He wants to launch another nuclear arms waste and start the Space Force. So it's all about spending more money. Uh, so Trump wants to spend more money uh, and cut taxes at the same time. I mean, that's completely reckless. All right, let me not ask you a question as a news guy now. Let me just ask you a, a question as, as, as Joe Citizen sitting out here listening to your conversation where I'm thinking, man, this guy's making some sense, but I'm very concerned about what he's saying. What are the signs that I should be looking for and what should I do about it? Well, the signs are already there. I mean, look, the stock market is falling. 40% of the S&P is already in a bear market. So the stock market is forward looking to the next recession. Uh, looking at what's happening with the home builders, uh, the housing stocks, the financials, the retailers. All these are the same things that were happening in 2007 leading to that crisis. So people need to be prepared. This is not only going to be an economic crisis, but a political crisis as well because the Republicans are going to take the blame and socialism is going to be seen as the solution and it's going to make the problems that hmm. much worse when it's implemented, you know, 2021. So what you've got to do is get out of U.S. dollar assets. The dollar is going to be the biggest casualty along with the American standard of living. But you've got to invest in foreign assets. Look at some of the bargains in foreign stock markets, emerging markets mm -hmm. uh, that have been depressed by the strong dollar. Uh, they're going to be uh, they're going to see a boom yeah. when the dollar weakens. And Look at the price of gold up another eight bucks today, but it's still about twelve hundred and thirty. Gold's going to new highs. It was at nineteen hundred in two thousand and eleven. It's going to go much higher this time. Sounds so get like invested um, on some gold. It's a, gold it, stocks. It's a, it, it sounds like a new reality, Peter. And we thank you for the hard truth. We gots to go, but thanks so much for sharing some of your wisdom with you. Look forward to talking to you again. All right, so that was that article. Let me grab one last article back on uh, CNNBusiness.com. And this came out October 29th, 2018, okay, so roughly about two days ago. And it's entitled, uh, Dow Swings More Than 900 Points During Wild Day of Trading. OK, so the Dow fell 900 points. I'll just read the first couple uh, paragraphs. It says glee about a big tech. Yeah, yeah, it says glee about a big tech merger since stocks soaring Monday. But then dread about the threat of new tariffs on China sent them plunging. OK, and that's what people fail to realize, man. These tariffs that the. Uh, that China is opposing on the U.S. Uh, on the United States of America, man, is, is affecting their economy heavily. You got, you know, uh, the president, uh, Donald J. Trump. You know, he's so proud, thinking that the, his economy, the household management of the of the uh, United States, can withstand. When that's that's not it, man. That's not to be true, man. These uh, tariffs is going is going is going to lead to the U.S. economy collapsing, man. And it says the Dow swung more than 900 percent, and it's going to lead to uh, it's going to lead to uh, inflation, and then hyperinflation. You know, the the economy is going to collapse, man. And it says the Dow swung more than 900 points from its highs on a day to its lows, and finished with more than 20. 
I mean, 245, yeah, 245 point loss. Stocks turned down in the uh, in the afternoon after Bloomberg, Sherlock, Sherlock after, after Bloomberg reported that the White House is considering more tariffs on China goods by December if the next round of negotiations between uh, President Donald Trump and Chinese leader uh, uh, Xi Jinping do not go well. Okay. So they are thinking about opposing more tariffs on China, man. If the uh, if the negotiations don't go well by the, December, man. All right. So now what I want to do, I'm going to grab the book of Zephaniah and the Bible. The book of Zephaniah chapter 1 verse I want to start at verse 10. And it says and and it shall come to pass in that day, save the Lord, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate, and a howling from the second, and a great crashing from the hills. I'm going to read that again. The book of Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 10. And it shall come to pass in that day, save the Lord, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate, and a howling from, from the second, and a great crashing from the hills. Okay. Now the fish gate... That's what I want to touch on the fish gate. The fish gate was a is is, is a very important part, especially of, of uh, ancient civilization, man. It was a it was a very it was a very important part to the economy. Okay, now I have an article on kchenson.com entitled "The Galilean Fishing Economy," and uh, it says Jesus, but. We know that the, tr uh, the name, the true name of the Lord and Savior is Hamashiach Yahushai, but it says in Jesus' tradition. Okay, now what I want to go to, I'll make sure I put this in a uh, link in the description. I want to go to the um, yeah. I'm gonna just go to the second. Uh, second paragraph and this is entitled it says an embedded economy politics and kinship okay and it says fishing was an important part of the galilean economy in the first century you see that so the fishing the fish gate or fishing is a uh, is a huge role in ancient civilization's economy man and it says but it but it was not the free enterprise which modern readers of the new testament may imagine even fishers who may have owned their own boats were part of a state-regulated elite profit and enterprise. In a complex web ec economic relationship, these are symptoms of an embedded economy, which an embedded economy is, it says embedded economy is an economy which economic activities occur such as production and distribution. Uh, distrib distribution shalaki however off uh, other activities which are not economic also occur okay so that's what embedded economy is which this it says that uh the galilean economy was like this and embedded okay it says these are systems of an embedded economy that is to say economies in the ancient mediterranean were not independent systems with free markets free trade stock exchanges monetization and the like as one fine in modern capitalist systems rather only political and kinship were explicit social demands economies and uh, religion were concept conceptualized controlled and sustained either by the political uh, hierarchy or kin or kin groups okay but i want to skip down to a diagram that i saw and this is entitled Gal Galilean Fishing as a Social Subsystem Diagram 1, the Political e e Economy of Galilean Fishing. Okay, so this diagram displays that uh, the Caesars were on top, okay, where you had uh, Caesars such as Augustus, Tiberius, and Caligula, okay, so they were the top of the social uh, social subsystem. Okay, then you had next uh, Herod, Antipas, the chief tax, uh, chief tax collectors, and then under them you had the uh, uh, the toll collectors, the tax collectors. Then you had the bro the the broker tax collector. Okay, 
and then under them you had the uh, the next you had the fishing families you see that the processors the distributors uh, the shippers the the carters the buyers and sellers and then under them you had the rest okay you had the rest just as the suppliers the uh, woodsmen weavers farmers stone masons merchants potters Okay, we're all good suppliers. Okay, so this is all the this is the sub uh social subsystems of the uh, of the Galileans. Okay, so the fishing, the fish gate or the fishermen were a huge part of is a huge part of the economy. Okay, so I'm gonna jump back to the book of Zephaniah chapter one verse ten, and it says, "And shall come to pass in that day, say the Lord, that there shall be a noise of a cry from the fish gate. Why is it gonna be a noise?" Of a cry from the fish gate, man, because it's going to be an economic collapse, man. It's going to be an economic collapse. Okay, which you know, without the fishermen or the the fishermen at the fish gate, man, uh, the economy wouldn't be able to withstand without uh, without without this trade or without these people. Okay, and your modern day fishermen is your what? Your warehouse workers, your people that work for Amazon, uh, you know, things like that. All right. So fish, the, the fish gate was a huge part of a, of a society's uh, economy, all right? And not only that, not only would they be your warehouse workers, uh, they would be uh, your traders, okay? It was, just a, it, it was just a huge part of ancient civilization's economy, all right? The fish gate or the fishermen. And it says, and a howling from the second and a great crashing from the hill. Now, that great crashing is talking about an economic collapse, okay? Another word, another term that we use uh, in modern days is what? A stock market crash, okay? So that great crashing from the hills is talking about your economic collapse or your stock market crash. Verse 11, it says, How ye inhabitants of Mictesh. Now, the inhabitants of Mictesh were, uh, where Mictesh was, uh, I believe it was an ancient city in uh, Israel. I believe it was not located too far away from Jerusalem. And also, you had a, a trade route. Okay. It was also a trade route where the the inhabitants thereof, as scripture says, um, were trading things such as gold, silver, a uh, cattle, uh, incense. Because incense back in the ancient world, especially during these times, were likened it to the price of silver and gold. Okay. So modern day Mctesh will be Wall Street, or ancient day Wall Street will be Mctesh. Okay. All right. Where all these trades was going on, man. All these trades are going on. And so it says, How ye inhabitants of Mictesh, for all the merchant people are cut down, and all they that bear silver are cut off. Okay? Meaning what? That they not going to have no money, man. All they that bear silver are cut off, man. Why? Because it's going to be a great market crash, a great crashing from the hills. And it says, It shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leaves. Now, when you look up the word leaves, it means to be, actually means to be settled. Okay? And to show you that the word leaves is synonymous with comfortable, one of the things that people, especially in these day and times, one of the things that people say when they get off work is what? I'm about to settle down, meaning what? They, they're about to get comfortable. So the Lord is going to punish all, the, all those men that settled on their leaves, that say in their heart, the Lord would, would not do good, neither will he do evil. And that's America to a T, man. America feels that it can't be punished, man. And it's not like the a great economic collapse is coming for for no reason okay the scripture says in the book of revelation the 18th chapter i believe of verse 4 or 5 it says that america's sins have reached up into the heavens man because america is that evil or that wicked empire man that's performed high level homosexuality lesbianism witchcraft idolatry the enslavement of the lord's chosen people so-called black Hispanics, and native americans all right so this is why all these things are coming OK, the Lord is going to punish the men that are settled on their leaves that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good. Neither will he do evil. All right. So I'm going to close out on this scripture right here. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse four. And the door shall be shut in the streets, meaning what? That it's not going to be uh, these businesses are going to fail, man, because of this economy collapse. OK. That you you're even witnessing as these uh, certain economists like to say the retail apocalypse. We got certain retail stores closing down, such as what you I believe it was Sears that filed for bankruptcy a couple weeks ago. Stores like Toys R Us, 
uh, Radio Shack, uh, uh, Ashley's Furniture. Okay, all these businesses are, are are shutting down, and that's the and the scripture says what, and the door shall be shut in the streets. All right. When the sound of the grinding gets low, even Jake out on the streets, you know, even though that's talking about that's talking about money. Even Jake on the street says what? When they making money that they grinding. Alright? So when the when the sound of grinding is low, meaning what? That these jobs are are aren't paying money because it, you know, they failed. They filed bankruptcy. There's no way to make money. That's the sound of the grinding is low. And it says that he shall raise up the voice of a bird. And all the daughters of music shall be brought low. And that's the time we live in it, man. The, the, the music is at its all-time low, man. I wouldn't even call music nowadays music. It's just noise, man. All these mumble rappers, man. The daughters of music is, is being brought low. It is low. It's not being brought. It's already low. Okay? So what I wanted to grab in the point of that scripture was that the, the door shall be shut in the streets. And the sound of grinding shall be low. Okay? And all this is happening, okay? Why? Because the U.S. economy is about to collapse, okay? It's about to collapse, and it's imminent, man. You see, you see the fruits of it. It says taking, uh, and it says the U.S. economy is about to collapse, taking down dollar and America, America standard living. Uh, Peter Schiff, all right. So with that, I hope you brothers out there was edified. I want to give all praise to Yahweh by Hashem Hamashiach Yehoshai by Hashem Rokakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone, GMS. And salutations to the elect brethren out there pushing the word in sincerity and truth. Shalom and Baba Bowl.